All right, uh, so this video I wanted to, to uh, play with this uh, video filter. This is the one that uh, had all of the uh, relays in it and uh, inductors here. I'll, I'll, I'll post a picture here. Uh, you can see the construction. It looks like a whole bunch of relays to select which filter you're looking at. It selects the in and the out uh, for each filter bank. And uh, it has, uh, now if we, if we look at the front, um, the inputs here are a plus five and ground to, to run the, uh, to run the um, TTL section and also to run all the relays. They're running off of five volts. And then we have uh, four bits of control. Okay, so that selects which filter you want. And the one big chip there um, in the, uh, on the board is a four to 16 decoder. And then the other two chips are just driver chips to, uh, to turn on, on and off the relays, add a little current. And then there's an input output uh, with the uh, SMCs. Um, yeah, so this has a, uh, a connector. So all of these lines are brought out to a connector. So I said, okay, well, I'll just leave it. I'll leave it as is. And uh, I'm gonna build a little board here. And um, I'm going to uh, have uh, switches. Uh, that will set ones and zeros on these four. And um, the inputs here go directly to that, uh, that four of 16 decoder. And so there's no uh, default. So you need to have pull-ups on those lines for a good high state. Um, so I was gonna put a, um, a pull-up four pull-up resistors here on this board, uh, but I decided I wanted to make this just a standalone device, so I, all I have to do is ground these things, and I could switch it just by grounding them and not have to worry about that pull-up. So I put the pull-up inside. So uh, here's a photograph of what I did. Um, I just added a little um, a SIP uh, resistor pack. It's a one, 1K resistor pack, and I added that to the, uh, uh, to the board. And I actually, it was like a nine or 10 pin sip. And I just snipped off a bunch of it and threw that away to make a little uh, four pin resistor pack uh, or five pins, four, four, four resistors in, in one plus five. Um, so it fits right on that, on that part really well. And so that's inside now uh, forever. And I only have to apply the, uh, uh, apply the switches here. So these just mount together now. Uh, I can just plug these and plug these on and I'm ready to go. I'll apply uh, five volts here and ground here and then uh, set the uh, bit pattern I want on the switches and uh, yeah, let's go sweep it out and see what it does. Um, I think I'll go ahead and use uh, the best equipment that I got for the job. Um, the best equipment for sweeping, uh, so there's lots of ways to do this. You could use a, um, a tracking generator with a spectrum analyzer. You could use a noise source with a spectrum analyzer. Uh, you could use a, a something like a nano VNA, uh, sweep that out under the S21 parameter. Um, so there's a whole one bunch of ways to sweep filters and I have tons of videos of doing all of those things. Now in my shop, the very best instrument to do this um, is my HP8921. And that's because it is a uh, spectrum analyzer with a, track, a tracking generator. That's a lot more than that. But that actually is the fastest piece of equipment that I have and the most accurate piece of equipment I have for this type of measurement. So always use the best equipment you have to do the job. All right, uh, so here you can see the filter. Um, I have a center frequency of 10 megahertz and a span of 20 megahertz, so, so zero, to, zero to 20 megahertz. And remember, uh, uh, 10 megahertz is in the center. And uh, what I've noticed is that the bit patterns don't make a total bunch of sense, they make a little bit of sense. Uh, so if we do uh, uh, zero, 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 uh, we get a very narrow uh, 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 low pass filter and it stays that way from zero zero to zero here's zero one doesn't really change much uh, here's here's uh, two zero one well it's okay so zero 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 one this is one zero and then this will be one one uh, one one so those are all about the same and then once we get to one zero zero 
then uh, it starts to move over a bit. So here, that all that was at about mm, about a half of a megahertz. So this is one megahertz, two, three, see, no, this is 10. So it's two, two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. So that was about one megahertz. This is about two megahertz, that, that, that dip down there. And then if we go to 101, uh, let's see, 101. Yeah, now we're at two. Uh, then we go to 110. Now we're at four. Um, now we do 111. Uh, you can see that it keeps moving over. We're at about five and a half. Now we go to 1000. 1000. We're out here at about six, six point seven five, somewhere around in there. We do one zero zero one. It's moved way over. We're about nine megahertz now, just just shy of ten. And then we do zero one zero. I mean one zero one zero, and we're up here uh, pushing on to uh, pushing on to twelve, about eleven and a half, eleven and a half megahertz, and then. Uh, if we go one more, it, it seems to be bypassing the filter. So uh, 1011 and 1100 seem to bypass the filter. And then if we go back to 11, let's see here, 1101, 1110, and 1111 all do about the same thing. They'll do about this two megahertz thing. So anyway, uh, so it is, it is adjustable. Uh, the bit patterns are a bit odd to me. Um, but in general, it is a, a low-pass filter, and the uh, uh, cutoff frequency is, is uh, selectable um, digitally. Yeah, so it does, uh, does what we thought. It's not a, um, not a bandpass filter. I thought maybe it was going to be a bandpass filter, but it is just a, a low-pass filter.